Well, uh, thank you very much to the organizers for the kind invitation. It's really a pleasure for me to be here. And let me talk to you about my work, uh, about the to clarify what is the right notion of the limit set in the higher dimensional setting, uh, we are following, by, until now, the, the ideas of Professor Kurt Carney, which was uh, initiated by, by Alberto and Pepe a long time ago. And let me tell you how are we doing the things right now. Yes? Uh, let me outline briefly how it's going to go my talk. Uh, Maybe it's better for in order to I get the right order. So uh, it's going to have uh, three parts. In the first part, uh, I am going to talk about briefly, very briefly, about some uh, features of the limit set in the one-dimensional case, uh, classical features, nothing very complicated. And in the second part, I am going to talk about uh, now uh, Juan Pablo's Navarrete theorem in dimension two, which is uh, the, the main theme of the of the talk, and basically I am going to try to explain you how this theorem uh, inspires us to fully give a solution of the, of the notion of the limit set in the two-dimensional case. And then I'm going to proceed in the third part to, to speak about this same theorem, in, now in the hard hill dimension setting, and I am going to make brief the proof. And if, 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 and if I had time, Maybe I can discuss uh, how this theorem now can be improved to, to get a, a right notion of limit sets and its relation with the Kulkarni limit sets, right? So let's begin. So some elementary facts from the one-dimensional case. Uh, Kleinian groups were introduced by Poincaré as the holonomy groups uh, of some second-order differential equations. Uh, to say uh, something, uh, or to be more precise, a Kleinian group is just a discrete group of Mobius transformations acting on the Riemann sphere. Yes? Uh, it is well known, uh, as we have seen during these lectures, that uh, a Kleinian group, a Kleinian group sorry, splits the sphere into two invariant sets, one namely the limit set and the other one the ordinary set. Yes? Let me be more precise what these things are. Uh, we have the following theorem or definition, it depends uh, what are you thinking. But for example, uh, one can see if you pick up a group of Mobius transformations, then the limit set is simply the, clos the, the closure of the cluster points of orbits points. Yes? Uh, you can think this very same set simply as a complement of the key continuity set of the group. Yes? You can also prove that uh, this set agrees with the complement of the largest open set on which the group acts discontinuously on the Riemann sphere. And also is the, sorry, here is complement, is also the complement of the largest open set on which the group acts, but now properly and discontinuously. This is a very special feature because in general, properly discontinuously is not the very same thing that discontinuous action. But this is a crucial point in the definition of Professor Kulkarni. And uh, also, you can show that for the non-elementary case, I am going to say later which mean, what does mean elementary, uh, that, the, that the limit set is simply the closure of the repelling fixed points, as uh, Caroline said, uh, tell us in uh, his lecture. Right, so as you can see, you can define the limit set in several, several ways. So we are interested uh, about to, uh, about to try to generalize or how we can generalize these notions in the higher dimensional city. Yes. Uh, some of the properties the, of this limit set, uh, very basic properties. Uh, for example, if you take a, a Kleinian group, then the set uh, contains one, two, or infinitely many points. Also, the, the limit set uh, contains infinitely many points. Uh, if the, sorry, if the, Limit set contains infinitely many points. Then the limit set is a nowhere dense perfect set, uh, which is minimal for the action of the group. Yes. One remark I wanted to make is is essential. Is that the, the proof of these facts, uh, this, of this theorem, of the previous uh, facts, 
is that the proofs are entirely based in two, in two things. Uh, one is the Montel theorems about normal families, and the other one is uh, related to the convergence property that the, claim, that the Mobius group enjoys. These are interesting features we are going to try to generalize uh, later. Well, uh, some examples of, uh, of these kind of groups we, we have seen a lot. Uh, some trivial are Schottky groups, kids in Schottky groups, triangle groups, fundamental groups of Riemann surfaces, and blah, 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 blah. You, can, you have a, a lot of interesting examples. This is just, it's just a taste. Uh, now, uh, passing to our team. Uh, the discrete groups of uh, projective transformations uh, have also uh, a background or a history which comes from the differential equations. Yes, uh, for example, uh, they can appear as the monodromy of certain partial differential equations, as the work in, of Yoshida in the 80s. They also appear as, as the monodromy of certain higher order differential equations, and also uh, in certain cases of, as the monodromy of certain type of recatifolations. Yes, uh, so with this, this in mind, I'm thinking, uh, to make or provide a, a generalization of the notion of Kleiner group. Uh, Alberto and Pepe uh, in the 90s uh, start to develop a, a theory of discrete groups acting in the of projective transformation, acting in the projective space, uh, and they begin to, to make things. Yes? So, some question that we wanted to ask or, or that uh, we are still working because it are not very clear for us, is the following, a yeah, very simple question. Uh, how are the various properties of the limit set related in the high dimensional setting? Uh, how can we generalize this kind of, of properties? Yes, very simple question. We still don't have very fancy question. We are still in the very beginning. Uh, let me give you some, some languages uh, I, for sure, you, everybody knows, but uh, just for sake of computations. Uh, remember that the complex projective space is to be defined at this, as this quotient. is simply the, the space of, of lines. And it's well known that the group of your biolomorphic automorphism of this, of this thing, which turns out to be a compact complex manifold, is simply this guy, is this quotient. Where this, 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 where C star, sorry, acts as by, by the usual scalar multiplication. Uh, the elements in this, in this guy are going to be called uh, predictive transformations. And we will say that uh, a matrix is a leaf of this predictive transformation simply if this matrix is a representative of the equivalence class of the, of the, of the predictive transformation. Yes? So, uh, we can think that uh, we are working with matrices, but we need to be cautious. Uh, yes? Uh, what else? Let's start with a very, very nice example, uh, which is given, was studied by Kulkarni in his uh, original paper. And uh, it's very simple. Consider the following transformation. As you can see, this transformation has exactly three fixed points in the projective plane. Uh, this one is attracting, you have one saddle, and you have a repelling fixed point. Yes? So what about all this notion that I told you in the very beginning? So uh, Kulkarni uh, shows uh, the following things. For example, that if you pick uh, this, the line is spanned by these two fixed points, and this point, which is this, and you take the, the other one, then these are the only maximal regions on which the group acts properly in this continuity. Yes? So this means that when you work uh, or when you are considering actions uh, different from Mobius transformation acting in the Riemann sphere, it can happen that no, uh, that no longer exists a, ma a maximal open set where the action is properly discontinuous. Uh, can be at least two. Yes? It can happen. 
Uh, well, uh, other thing that Professor Kulkarni has shown is, for example, that the Kulkarni region, sorry, the, the complement, the, the continuity region, is very simple. You just to take the complement of, this, of these two lines. Yes? Uh, let me propose, uh, thinking about this, this very simple example, let me propose two possible, just to start, two possible definition of, of limit set. In order to, 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 to talk about this, this possible definition of limit set, one is the Kulkarni definition, one is the Kulkarni limit set, let me introduce very simple tools. Yes, one is the so-called uh, Meyerberg compactification of the projective uh, group. Yes, this is very simple. Uh, for example, consider the space of linear transformation from CN plus one to, to itself. Uh, clearly, this is a linear complex vector space where the group of invertible matrices is an open stand set. Yes? So consider this question. Again, it's a projective manifold. Um, as you can see, now you can show that the projective transformations are a form an open dense set in this space uh, of, of uh, pseudo projective maps. Yes? So uh, this is uh, a way to see this, this set embedded in this one. So uh, the, the funny fact is that we can produce a, a map for every element here from the, from the projective space. But we need to be careful. So I start with a, a matrix and then take, take away the kernel. You need to, to put it away in order to avoid the difficulties. And then simply define the action of this, of this thing in the very natural way. Yes? So you have a very well-defined map which uh, extends the notion of a projective transformation. Yes? So a very, a very simple question is, that, is the following. You have a, a convergence a notion of convergence, uh, convergence here, since this is a projective space, and now you also have a notion of convergence, uh, but now from the point of view of function theory. Yes. So the question is how is how uh, are related each of these convergence, uh, convergences, right? So we have a, a theorem that tells us how these are related, and they are related in a very nice way. So. For example, if you pick up a sequence of projective transformations which, converge, which is converging to this element as a point here, then you can say that these elements converge to tau, to this very same element, but now as a function in this set, in the complement of the kernel, yes? So everything goes well. This is telling us that, for example, the equicontinuity of this sequence is very simple to compute. It's simply the complement of this kernel. Yes? So this lemma, as you can see, uh, provides us a generalization of the convergence property uh, of the Mobius groups. Yes? So uh, one definition I would like to, to work with is the, the complement of the key continuity. As you can see, the key continuity is very simple to, 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 to be determined. Um, well, that's all I want to say for this. Again, let me tell you again the, the notion of limit, cool kernel limit set. Uh, as we have seen from the course of Pepe, the cool kernel limit set uh, is constructed as follows. Uh, maybe it's a little bit different, but this, uh, in, the, in the end, is the same definition. Pick first the closure of the cluster points of orbits of points. Now, uh, the Kulkarni limit set is to be defined as a union of this set lambda gamma and another set, L2. This set is simply the closure of cl cluster points of the family gamma k, where k runs over all compact sets lying in the complement of this lambda gamma. Yes? So the ordinary set in the sense of Kulkarni is simply the, the complement. Uh, it's the very same definition as Professor Kulkarni, yes? Uh, we have the, the, the Kulkarni limit set has the following features. Uh, maybe they are a bit uh, 
not very impressive, but they are useful in, in the following. Uh, for example, the, we have the following due to, to Juan Pablo Navarrete, a former student uh, of Pepe, which said that, uh, for example, if you pick up a, a group of projective transformation and you have a closed set which is invariant on the reaction of the group, and you can ensure that the closer points of orbits of compact sets lying outside the set that you, you take, and you can ensure that the closer points of these, these orbits lie exactly in this intersection, then you can ensure that the Kulkarni limit set is going to be contained in this set, say, in this set C. See? So you can ensure that the Kulkarni limit set has this kind of uh, quasi-minimality. It's something like minimal, but very close, yes? We have also the, this, this, these properties. Do, uh, the first part is due to Professor Kulkarni, the second part is due by myself and, and Pepe, and says that, for example, the group, uh, if you pick up a, clay, a complex claim group, then the group acts properly and is continuously on the discontinuity region, and also we can show that the group acts properly and is continuously uh, on the key continuity set, and you have a precise relationship between this, these two sets. You can say it always that the key continuity set is going to be contained in the Kulkarni limit set. So in this sense, we can have or provide a fair relationship between these two possible notions of a limit set, right? Uh, we have uh, many more things, but uh, these things are the one we, we want, I wanted to, to say. Uh, in order to, to show uh, how complicated can be to determine the Kulkarni limit set, let me present you some examples. So, for example, if you consider the this group, this cyclic group, as we have seen from the previous talk, this, uh, we have uh, that the quotient is a hop surface, and in this case, it's not very hard to, to show that the Kulkarni limit set is simply a line plus a point outside. Yes, in this case, it's very simple and it's very fast to make the calculation. Uh, also, uh, for example, if you pick uh, four linearly independent vector points and you consider this, then when you consider the action of this, of the, of this group, of the group expanded by these elements, then the group is not hard to show that acts uh, in the fan chart like the fundamental group of Fattori. Yes, so it's not, it's not hard to show that in this case the Kulkarni limit set is simply the line at infinity. Very simple, yes? So uh, this is sample is, is very tricky. <laughs> let, me, let me just put the, the slide, please read it. And let me explain what, what does it say or what, what I want not to say. Uh, this example uh, was to, to Inoue. Are, uh, this example uh, comes from the fundamental group of the Inoue surfaces. And it's very special. Uh, and the reason is because it's special is the following. In this case, you can show that the Kulkarni limit set is going to be a pencil of lines uh, over a circle. Yes. But in this case, you can show that the equicontinuity region is empty, which means, for example, that you can find subgroups of, of this guy such that the Kulkarni limit set is not contained in the Kulkarni limit set of the larger group. So this, is, uh, this appears as bad because this is saying that the Kulkarni limit set is not monotone. Yes? So this is why I wanted to, to talk about this, this example. Forget about it, all this, this, this stuff. Uh, let me recall some uh, things that Professor Parker have said in his course. Uh, consider the, the following emitted matrix. Then it's an um, emission matrix of uh, signature 1n. Define this group, which is simply the, the set of matrices which preserve the, the respective emission matrix. And consider the complex ball, uh, which is this, the same thing that uh, John did in his course. So uh, as, prof as, as John said, uh, we can classify the elements in this group simply by saying that the element is loxodromic if it has two fixed points in the boundary of, the, of this bowl, and it's parabolic if it has one, exactly one fixed point in the boundary, and it's going to be elliptic if it, it has at least one fixed point inside the bowl. Yes? So this, we are going to use this about a little bit of this language. Uh, 
well, I going to need also this, this remember, recall this definition uh, about the chain limit limit set. Uh, remember that uh, given a group that preserves the complex bone, we define the chain limit limit set simply as a set uh, in the boundary uh, which correspond to the accumulation points of, of orbits of points given in the interior of the bone. Yes, and this says as I think somebody has said or uh, speak about this, has or enjoys the same very properties of the limit set in the one-dimensional case. I mean, uh, the limit set contains one, two, or infinitely many points. The limit set is uh, a nowhere dense perfect uh, closer set and blah, 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 blah. Behaves very, very nice. Yes? So, uh, a very naive question is that uh, how can do you determine the Kulkarni limit set of the group, but, but when you consider the action now in the full projective space, not only in the ball. Yes? And this question was uh, answered by Juan Pablo Navarrete, and he said basically that the Kulkarni limit set is very simple. Yes? Uh, it's very simple in the following way. Uh, let me pick, uh, make a picture, a big, a big draw, a little draw. So uh, Navarrete said that pick the points uh, given by the chain Grimmer limit set, and then you are, and then you take simply uh, the tangent lines to the ball at the points of the chain Grimmer limit set. So, and this is the Kulkarni limit set. Yes. Uh, let me give you a different proof in order that. Uh, to show you how the, the things work in this case. And uh, the proof is different from the original one. The original one uses a strongly uh, complex hyperbolic geometry. I don't like it by myself. Uh, I like a complex hyperbolic geometry. But the problem is that when you use complex hyperbolic geometry, you are not able to to extend to another kind of groups. So we are going to try to avoid, but we are going to try to, to keep the philosophy. The, the philosophy is the, the, the correct one. So uh, the philosophy is very simple. Uh, first, the, the very first we need is to get control about the discontinuity rate, the key continuity rate. Yes? So in this case, we have the, the following theorem that said that the a key continuity region is precisely, uh, sorry, here is the complement. The, the key continuity region is precisely the complement of, this, of these lines. Yes? Um, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and the proof, the idea of the proof is very simple. Take a sequence of distinct elements such that uh, the sequence converges to some uh, quasi -project, pseudo projective transformation, transformations and also the sequence of the inverses, right? So in this case, you can show that the image of, the, of this guy is a point like in, in the boundary, and the respective kernel is going to be exactly the, the orthogonal complement of the image of this guy. Yes? Because if, if this not, is not true, you can have a, a figure like this, and then you only need to compose the, this sequence with the sequence of the inverses, and you get a contradiction. Yes? So here we avoid to describe the, the key continuity set of the, the, here we are avoiding the use of the complex hyperbolic geometry to show that, uh, the, the, to describe the, the key continuity region. We are avoiding this, this, this thing. So this is very strong. Oh, very useful, sorry. Uh, a second fact that we need is, is the following that given, a uh, uh, group, uh, here we can always find, uh, and only elementary, of course, we can find always a, a loxodromic element. And in this case, uh, as Professor Parker did, we can ensure that the normal Jordan form of such elements have this form. Yes? So we have proofs in the high here dimensional setting where we can ensure, just by using algebra, that in any kind of group, you can find loxodromic elements, where loxodromic means something. Yes? So as you can see, 
we have a very, a very special thing here. Here we have, uh, and that the loxodromic elements look exactly as the uh, as the ones that the, as the one in the cool current example. Yes, you have an attractive point, you have a saddle point, and you have a repelling point. So. The analysis that Professor Kulkarni did in his example can help us in order to understand the things in, a, in another general setting. Yes. So we have the following uh, lemma, which is called the lambda lemma, is due to, to Juan Pablo, and, is, and this reflects that I, I said I said to you. Yes, and it says the following: uh, pick up an element of this kind. Assume that you have a, an open set on which this cyclic group acts properly and discontinuously, then you can ensure always that either the, this line or this line is contained in the complement of such set. Yes? So this is saying you that in particular, uh, if you propose some def notion of limit set, you can expect that this notion of limit, or this, this limit set is going to contain lines. Yes? So let me give you a, a brief proof. It's, it's in the very same spirit of uh, the, the ideas of Kulkarni. Uh, assume that the limit fails, then you can find a point here, for example, in, in this repelling line, such that this neighborhood, this red neighborhood, is contained entirely in our set omega. Then just pick uh, another point in this line, and then just consider uh, the, the iterated of this, this line. As you can see, this, this is going to converge to this one since this is a repelling, and this is going to converge to this one since this is, since this is attracting. So this means that this line is going to converge to the attracting one, yes? So this means, in, in, ter, uh, in, in terms of the convergence, that then you can find a sequence converging to, to this point, since the equicontinuity of this, of this group is the complement of these two lines, such that this this guy converts to, to W, where, you, where this W is any given point here, yes? So this is saying something like, uh, you can find, you can, for every point here, you can find a sequence here such that the co sequence converts to P, and the sequence, this sequence is going to converge to W, yes? So it's the very same idea as Kulkarni did in his article. So as you can see, the, a very, Simple fact is that in this case we are traducing the dynamic of the group, not in the we are working the dynamic of the group. Sorry, not in the ambient not in the ambient space. We are working the dynamic now in the dual space. I mean in the first grass linear. Yes. So this is a very first important fact. Uh, now the proof of Navarrete is, is very simple, and we are we don't need the complex hyperbolic geometry a lot. Uh, you only apply the lambda lemma, the existence of loxodromic elements. So by these two lemmas, you can ensure that the set of lines is contained in Kulkarni. So in order to conclude the proof, remember that uh, I have shown that the, this, you could, we have this uh, contention. Yes, so very simple. So as you can see, uh, before I, I continue, as you can see, we have three ingredients in order to to prove the Navarrete's theorem in dimension two. One ingredient is lambda lemma. The second ingredient is existence of loxodromic elements and know the normal Jordan form. And the third ingredient is know, precise in, know in a precise way the, the key continuity region. As you can see by the theorem of uh, Jose uh, Pepe, sorry, and myself, we have a, a fully description of the key continuity set. So this part is done. Uh, by the course of uh, Professor Parker, we know that the loxodromic elements exist and the normal Jordan, and the normal Jordan form is fully determinated. So the second part is on. So the only ingredient that we need is to, current, uh, is to the only ingredient that we are missing is the lambda lemma. See, yes? So uh, in the higher dimensional setting is going to be our, our task. So uh, let me tell how the how 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 these kind of things. Uh, let me avoid this. Uh, let me tell you how this kind of this theorem help us to to understand things 
or help us to, to understand the role of Polkarni limit set uh, in this high, in this two-dimensional setting. Well, this was an, an idea of Alberto. And Alberto told us that uh, the following thing. If you wanted to understand the relationship between the dynamic, you need to understand Montel theorem in high health dimensional setting. So work for a, a Montel theorem, yes? Uh, and he told us uh, you need to count lines. And that's what we did in, in this case. Uh, so uh, this is a theorem of, of Barrera and Navarrete. And it basically said that if you pick up a, a domain of C2 of C and you pick a family of projective transformations, and the predictive transformations omit three lines in general position, then the family is normal. So, uh, Picard, like, like Picard. So we, we own these the ideas to, to Alberto. Uh, and Pepe, and Pepe. Yes, 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 yes. It's the same problem of the cartan montel theorem in the higher dimension of the team. Uh, but now uh, the improvement is that uh, we said lines, and the Cartan theorem said about a, a per super superficies and that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the, the original one said five lines in general position, and the proven of the, these guys is three. So it's really. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and. Yes, uh, so uh, as you can see now the task, since we have a, a normal family criterion, is to count lines, simply. So the very first fact is that we have at least one line that is uh, a simple consequence of the lambda lemma. Uh, now if you can, if you put yourself to count things, it's very simple or it's not very complicated to show that the number of lines is one, two, three, or infinitely many, but since you don't, you want, lines in general positions, you need to count lines now in general position. And now the number of lines is one, two, three, four, or infinitely many, but in general position. So you can say in, in a way that groups with infinitely, ma in infinitely many lines in general positions are generic in some sense. Yes? Uh, so now, can, now we have the, the solution of the problem of the limit set is done by, by the group. And sets basically that accepting the group, uh, accepting the, the case of Professor Kulkarni, every group, for every group, the Kulkarni uh, discontinuity region is the largest open set on which the group acts properly and discontinuously. Yes, accepting for, the, for example, Professor Kulkarni. And you can say more. You can say if uh, you have three lines in general position in this set, then everything goes well. The, the Kulkarni discontinuity region is a key continuity region, and the Kulkarni limit set is the closure of the loxodromic repelling lines. Again, everything goes well. And if you have only two, well, don't worry, it's just a pencil of lines over a circle, or, 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 or maybe over a limit set of, the, of a Mobius transformation group. Uh, but, and in other cases, the dynamic is in the sense of the lines. It's not very interesting. He just said that the number of lines is exactly one, or one line and one point, which correspond exactly to the fundamental groups of hop surfaces. So this is part from our work in the two-dimensional case, which come from ideas from Alberto, from, from Pepe. Uh, we can say things about the geometry of the domains and blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to go to, to the high dimensional case. Yes? So uh, as you can see, the, the role of the, the Navarrete's examples is to provide us uh, things to imagine things about uh, another context. Yes? Uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the theorem of Juan Pablo is important because uh, it tells you first. You can expect that in order to understand dynamic of uh, discrete groups of projective transformations, you don't need to work in the ambient space. In the ambient space. You need to work in the Grassmannian. 
Yes, uh, and the other thing is that in order to understand that dynamic, uh, you need a very few things. A lambda lemma and a description of the key continuities. And this avoids to use, in the very beginning, complex hyperbolic geometry. But, well, uh, just in this uh, stage. Uh, let me provide you a very simple example. Consider this very simple example, just like the one given by Professor Kulkarni. Uh, if you use the lambda lemma, which is very simple, it's not, it's not, not very complicated, you can ensure that if you have a, a maximal open set on which the group acts properly and discontinuously, then you can find two sets here, which corresponds to, to this space, which are these joints, and also that the, its closures give you the, this full line, such that this, this set is simply to be this set of lines. Uh, sorry, maybe a, a picture is going to be better. So by the lambda lemma said that the, if you want to construct a maximal open sets for the action of this guy, you only have to take here something like, uh, something like this, and then you draw the pencil of lines of this guy, of this, uh, of this sense, and then you only think, you only need to, to draw something like this, uh, something like, uh, sorry, I don't know how to say in Spanish, una uh, enramada, in English, uh, something like this. So in this way you can, this shows that uh, if you try to understand the limit set now in the hard head dimensional sitting, again, the, the problem is the, the problem of how to choose the lines. But now uh, the problem looks uh, more complicated. Now you can have not one or two maximal open sets on which the action is properly discontinuously. Maybe can, it can happen that you have infinity limit. So how, how can we expect to solve this problem? Uh, Let's see, wait, the following, the previous example was interesting. It's, it's interesting. Uh, pick a, an element in PU1N, so by the lecture of Professor uh, Parker, it's not very hard to, to ensure that whenever you pick a loxodromic element, the, limit, the loxodromic element has this normal Jordan form. Yes? So this means that uh, if you wanted to understand maximal open sets on which the cyclic group is generated by this element, how are these things? You only need to understand the previous one and use only the lambda lemma. Yes, uh, some simple consequences. Uh, pick a loxodromic element and take its fixed points. Then for every, every element, you can ensure that either this line or, this, or the other line in the complement, as in the lambda lemma, appear in, the, in, appear in any complement of uh, region of discontinuity. Uh, this is for points which are the base of loxodromic elements. But now if you believe in this, then you can uh, provide the following. You can ensure that you pick just to any points in the, in the chain grimmer limit set, then, then the very same uh, thing happens, yes? This is just because uh, uh, this is this is true. Uh, the very same idea, yes, and the use of uh, the lambda lemma. So uh, we have the, the following theorem of the way to to myself, uh, Bing and Marlon, which is a generalization of the Navarrete theorem. See, and the generalization is exactly the same, and it says the following: If you pick up a group, a discrete group of preserving the complex unitary ball, then the Kulkarni limit set is simply the set of hyperplanes passing through the chain Grimberg limit points, yes, which are tangent to the ball. And that's all. So very simple. Let's see how can we prove this. Just remember, 
in order to prove this, we need three ingredients and we have two. So we only need to provide the proof for the, for the lambda lemma. Yes? So uh, let me remind you uh, a little bit of projective, uh, sorry, about, uh, let me remind you the Cartan invariant, which was discussed by Professor Parker. And it appears. Uh, remember that the Cartan invariant for, for a triplet is given by this formula and is interesting at the very beginning because if you, can, if you need to ensure that there is a transformation that takes three points into another three points, it's enough to ensure that they, they have the same Cartan invariant at this moment. So let us construct uh, a map which is we call the, the return first return map because it's going to, to have the very same spirit as the first return map of Poincare. Yes? And this is the expression. Maybe uh, a draw is going to be better. Yes? Uh, pick a pick two points in the chain Greenberg limit set. Uh, for example, you can think that your points are very, are very special ones in order to make easy computations, and then pick, pick another here. Yes? So uh, what happens if you have uh, a line here? Yes? So you can, you can form, or you can imagine that the that the other different planes like look like this. So you have a line here, and you wanted to, to make that this line travel to, to this way. So this map is doing the, the following. You start with took these two points. They can be the fixed points of a loxodromic element. Now change to these ones. Now by the previous proposition, the, the, you can think that this are the, the fixed point of a loxodromic element. You can think, they are not. Yes? So you can now iterate and ensure that now this line is going to travel now into this, into this one. Yes? The only thing is that you are thinking that here you have a loxodromic element. It's, just, it's like a virtual loxodromic element. It's not, it's not real. Yes? You only pass from here to here. Yes, and now you can see that it can happen that this line does not arrive to, do, to this point. Yes, if you arrive to the same point, then the problem is solved. You can, it can happen that this line moves, and this movement, this movement is simply that what we are calling is fizzy. Yes, uh, some things that we can say about this this, this return map it is the following. Uh, which is this useful? For example, if you pick uh, an open set on which the group acts properly and discontinuously, and you pick a point precisely in this intersection and consider the respective line, this one, then uh, the phenomena that is happening is that exactly that I told you. That uh, if this line is the complex uh, is in the complement of this of this guy, then this line the, the, one that, what the one that travels is going to be contained in the complement of the discontinuity region. Yes? Uh, this is a very first thing. A uh, second fact which is now very interesting is that this kind of movement is not any movement. It needs to be or it needs to belong to this group. So it's very special. So in fact, we can say uh, you need to make some easy computations that the normal Jordan form of this of this movement, of this return map, is simply this guy, yes? I, and as you can see, the, the proper values of this matrix is simply given in terms of the Cartan invariant, see, yes? So this, this return map encodes, in a way, the geometry of the chain Grimmer limit set. Uh, well, here is the drawings that I was just made here. So, uh, 
how can we use these things? Well, uh, as you can see, the transformations by itself don't help. Uh, because the, the movements can, or not necessarily, arrive to the very same point. Yes? And we can say, well, maybe if you move one point, the point, and you approximate to, to one of the extremes, maybe it can happen that in the limit, you can get the, the line. You can get to, to, to this guy. I mean, it can happen maybe in the limit that you are approximately here as you move to here or as you move from to here, yes? But as you can see from, as you can see from our formula, you cannot expect this. There is not a, a kind of continuity when you move to the, to the extremes. So you need to be, or you need to do this carefully. Yes? Uh, so what we did to solve this, this problem is consider all the finite products of this, all these possible return marks and consider the closure. Yes? So this is a compact Lie group. And it has a very nice feature. Uh, whenever, you pick, whenever you pick an open set on which the group acts properly and is continuously, and you pick up a point here, uh, and if you can ensure that this line is contained in the complement, then you can ensure that the full orbit under this group, but now of this line, is going to be contained in the opposite hyperplane. Yes? So this means that if you can ensure that this is a group, you can ensure that eventually you are going to arrive to this point and you can ensure that this line and these lines both belong to the complement and then you are going to ensure that the lambda lemma is true. Yes? So this is the, this is the construction. This is the, the key idea. So we have two steps to prove the lambda lemma. We need our return maps, and we have this control group. Yes? As you can see, we are saying that in order to understand the dynamic of this kind of groups, you need to produce a control group but not in the ambient space. You need to produce a new group now acting in the Grassmannian. And now, generically, this control group turns, turns out not to, turns out, turns, sorry, turns out to be a Lie group. So you are controlling a discrete dynamic through a continuous dynamic, which is in the same spirit of uh, Poincaré as Alberto always is, uh, teaching us. Yes, so uh, same philosophies. Uh, idea, how, how is the idea with the proof? Uh, so uh, it's just enough to prove that, the, that it holds that, that uh, sorry, it's just enough to prove that uh, this part it's true, but only but for for phi uh, phi square. And well, the, here are the, the ideas. Uh, basically, we have uh, used the tools from uh, higher the higher higher uh, several complex variables. Yes, uh, as you can see, what we are the problem with are we dealing with is a problem of how, how is behaving the group of automorphism when we approach to the border. Yes? So uh, if you see the, the arguments, we are treating with uh, what, sorry, we are treating with the sequences which are called uh, parabolic sequences, which are very useful in the study of the geometry of domains in the several complex variable city. Yes? So we use these tools from several complex analysis in order to ensure that uh, our things keeps or produces a group which control the dynamics. So uh, this is the very first time we use complex analysis to understand the dynamic. 
Yes? So they, these are the, the, the general ideas, how we construct the, the sequences. Um, the philosophy is that in this kind of groups, you need to go to the Grassmannians and construct a, con a group which control the dynamic. Yes? Uh, I have a, a five minutes, maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe, it's all, it's all I wanted to talk. Uh, maybe if you have any question, 